How many of you know that our human bodies are an ecosystem supporting over 100 trillion microorganisms? <laughs> 100 trillion. The genes in these microorganisms outnumber our human genes 99 to 1. As a PhD biochemist, I can tell you that the largest impact on our human ecosystem is the 50 tons of food we eat, each eat, in a lifetime. 50 tons, like this mother whale. It's mind-altering to appreciate the role these microorganisms play in our health, because we can't see them, right? Most of them are in our digestive tract. But imagine overgrowth in an ecosystem, where the rest of the ecosystem is deprived of vital nutrients, such as a pond overrun with algae. Now imagine an ecosystem of absence, where there's not any growth because of a harsh environment, like chlorine in a swimming pool. What I want you to know is imbalances like these occur in our human ecosystem in epidemic proportions and are associated with diseases worldwide. The movie isn't on yet, honey. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> That was a video of my daughter, Brooke, at the age of three, soon after she was diagnosed with autism. These episodes occurred frequently. This particular one lasted for over four hours. She manifested this high anxiety where she'd be stuck in this loop, this particular loop, over whether or not she wanted a movie. Other behaviors consistent with this diagnosis are shown in this video. Brookie. Yo, sister, Brooke. Elizabeth. We love you, Brookie. Where's my smile? As a mother, I was traumatized, overwhelmed, and deeply saddened. My family was in crisis. But as a scientist, I was determined. And so I got to work. And because I know the impact of food on our health, my scientific journey focused on examining our diet and its impact on Brooke's ecosystem. I immediately investigated the gluten casein-free diet because so many families were, through their uh, experience with autism and their anecdotal experience, it would say how much this improved their children. Now, gluten and casein are common, highly processed proteins in the Western diet. Now, even though Brooke did not test positive or sensitive to either one of these proteins, when we removed them from her diet, her behaviors improved significantly. Now, she was still considered autistic, but there was significant improvement in her behaviors. And this led me down the investigation of food manufacturing processes. And I discovered that the common link between gluten and casein is that these proteins contain an abundant amount of glutamate, an amino acid, which is the building block of proteins. But because these proteins are so highly processed in the diet, that bound glutamate becomes free glutamate, no longer part of the protein. This led me to over one million scientific publications associating all sorts of various diseases and disorders to glutamate imbalance. Now, interestingly, the scientists don't speculate as to how the epidemic of glutamate imbalance is occurring. Rather, the focus is on developing drugs to block the glutamate activity from binding to its various target sites. I decided to take a different approach and determine what would happen if we removed all foods enriched and fortified in free glutamate from Brooks diet. Now, the most abundant glutamate found in our diet is monosodium glutamate, or MSG. Now, if somebody had asked me at this point if I had been consuming MSG, I could have very well been holding a food that contained MSG and denied it emphatically. But what I didn't know is that there's over 50 ingredients that contain free glutamate but are not labeled as such. Now, manufacturers are increasingly putting it in the food 
It's a trillion dollar market because it makes our brains think the food tastes good. As a result, over 95% of our processed foods contains MSG or free glutamate, including many infant formulas. My research leads me to posit that the amount of free glutamate in the Western diet is causing an ecosystem imbalance. And here's how. The amount in the diet is enough to overactivate the amount or the number of glutamate receptors right in our digestive tract. Overactivation is a stress response and leads to inflammation. Glutamate begins to pool at the site of inflammation. The more glutamate there is, the more severe the inflammation. Now, our microorganisms are extremely adaptive, and they can change their metabolism in response to a change in environment, including using glutamate for energy. An example of such a micro or an opportunistic microorganism is the bacteria associated with Lyme disease. Will actually migrate to the highest concentrations of glutamate and start to thrive there. It'll continue to induce inflammation to continue its supply of glutamate, and the host that's us, is in a chronic state of inflammation. The result is we get these microorganism populations that are just thriving on MSG. Give me MSG. And undoubtedly, they're participating in our strong cravings for these foods. But high glutamate concentration is a very harsh environment, so many of our beneficial microorganisms die off. Overgrowth and absence within the same ecosystem. All right, all right. Now, what happened to Brooke? when we removed all foods enriched or fortified in free glutamate, Brooke began to thrive in her environment. Here's a video at the point we started the diet till current day, three years later. I have to wash my hands. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. He's giving me a flower, and I say, thank you. He says, you're welcome. <laughs> Brooke is no longer considered autistic, according to a clinical psychologist, and what a relief. But as a mother, the most rewarding is to see the return of joy in my child, although the cat doesn't look so happy here. <laughs> Now, three years later, we continue to manage Brooke's ecosystem balance through a controlled diet, for if we don't, her autistic behaviors return. I have now helped thousands of people manage numerous chronic illnesses through raising awareness of what's in our food and helping people redefine food. I can tell you, restoring ecosystem balance does not come in a pill. You can think of it this way. We have the power to control over 99% of our human ecosystem genomics through our food choices. I invite you, I challenge you, I implore you, empower yourself for you, your family, and even your next generation by transitioning to a diet based on whole foods and getting rid of the processed foods. And in this way, you and your ecosystem may thrive not merely survive.